The next technique is proof by contradiction. And here, uh, in addition to the body of knowledge, let's say, you have uh, a premise and you have a conclusion here. But to show that conclusion is true, uh, you also show as a premise that uh, the premise P together with the negation of the conclusion forms a contradiction. Okay? So this follows, the, the conclusion follows from this. Here's a simple example. Let M and N be integers. If M times N is even, at least one of M or N must be even. Okay? Simple statement. Let's prove this using contradiction. Assume M times N is even. Okay, so this is given already. And both M and N are odd. Now you see this is the negation of this uh, conclusion that we are trying to prove. We are going to show that this negation together with this premise is going to lead to a contradiction so that the conclusion, this one, must be true. Now, M times N is even and M is odd, N is odd. This means there exists a K1 integer, M equals 2K1 plus 1 by definition of odd numbers. And similarly, N equals 2K2 plus 1 for some integer K2. Then, of course, to obtain M times N, multiply these two expressions, okay? That gives you, uh, of course, 4K1, K2, plus 2K1, plus 2K2, plus 1. And then you can group this as 2 times 2K1, K2, plus K1, plus K2, plus 1. Now, this here is an integer, obviously, and M times N clearly is two times some integer plus one, which means it's an odd number. However, this contradicts with this assumption. M times N is assumed to be even. So if we, we see that it's odd, that's a contradiction. Therefore, this cannot be, and this statement is true, okay? So this is essentially how proof for contradiction uh, works. Next one is proof by construction. Um, this is a classical example that exists irrational numbers, x and y, for which x to the power of y is rational. Um, at this point, it's not really necessary, so I'm not going to really define what's a rational number, what's an irrational number, etc. I'm just going to show you how the proof works. And assume x is square root 2, and y is equal to log 2 of 9. Now, these two are irrational numbers. Again, I'm going to refer this information to, let's say, the body of knowledge. Okay, So we, we can prove these, but I'm not going to do that. There are classical proofs for irrational to square root 2, etc. But uh, we are going to just uh, use them as, as known and established facts and we are going to base this proof on them, okay? But uh, in a general sense, you need to show them also. Now, x and y are irrational numbers, but when you take x to the power of y, this gives you three, square root two to the power log two of nine, this gives you three. Uh, this is clearly a rational number, which concludes the proof. Now. Uh, as I said, this, no, uh, this, this proof relies on the knowledge of uh, square root 2 and log 2, 9 are irrational. This has to be established beforehand, okay? Now, uh, proof by construction, the main characteristic of this, this method is it provides either an explicit example, as we have just seen, okay? Uh, okay, this x along with this y satisfies this. Okay, you are done, okay? because it was an existence um, theorem, okay? So just one example suffices because it just says exists. So uh, proof by construction is a very suitable candidate for those type of arguments. Alternatively, sometimes proof by construction 
it, it just doesn't give you an explicit, explicit example, but it gives you a way, a method, or an algorithm to obtain an explicit example, okay? Again, here's an example. For every positive definite matrix A, there exists a lower triangular matrix L such that A equals L times L transpose. Again, I'm not going to define what positive definite is, lower triangular matrix is or transposes, etc. That's not the point here. I'm just going to show you. This is uh, due to Scholesky, um, a French mathematician. And uh, essentially, this is the matrix A, which is assumed to be positive definite. And by definition, positive definite matrices are symmetric. And this is my lower triangular matrix. And this is its transpose. And in fact, if you just directly multiply L with L transpose, what you obtain is this, L11 squared at this point. So this is obviously equal to A11. And here, when, when you take the square root of A11, you get L11 clearly. And when you know L11, you put it here because you know this A12, then you can obtain L21, okay? When you know L11 and L21, since this is known, and this whole thing is A22, you can find L22, okay? Now you know L11, L22, that means since this is A33, you can find L33 because you know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Not this one, but this here. I know L11 and this is A13, so I can find L31. Okay, so from that, I, if I know L31 and if I know L21 from here and I know L22 from here and this whole thing is L32, uh, then I can compute L32. And when I know it, L31, L32, I can compute L33, etc. So there, there is a, a pattern here. From this, I can find this. From this, I can find this. So it's possible to actually write down an algorithm that will do this procedure. So this is a uh, proof by construction. So here you see the actual expressions that you can uh, use to write an algorithm uh, to obtain the Scholesky decomposition of a given positive definite matrix. So this is in fact uh, also a, a proof by construction example because uh, again, this is uh, an existence theorem, and this proof, it, it just doesn't prove you, okay, somehow that exists. It doesn't do that. It gives you a way to actually compute that matrix L, so that when you compute it, you can just verify A, in fact, equals L times L transpose. Therefore, it actually exists. 